Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month, and you will receive live updates both on my close friends' Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. So I have finally got my fabrics. They came in the mail, um, well at least the, the pink satin. Um, the pink satin and the other materials over there up on the ironing table. Um, those came in a, a couple of days ago from Homecraft Textiles, um, which is an Australian store in Western Australia. And um, yeah, I ordered fabric from there. So the other fabrics I've got Actually, I'll just cover off the fabrics that I got from Homecraft. Um, so the first one is this... Oh no, there's a stain. Oh well. Um, the first one is this light pink crepe back satin material. Um, yeah, this is going to be the main dress fabric. Um, and then as you can see, I'm just looking at how the netting is going to look over the top of that. Uh, the other fabrics that I got from Homecraft, I got this, um, it said cotton voile, I don't know how to pronounce the word, I think it's voile, um, but it's very, very sheer, and I thought I was going to use this for the, um, the lining of the bodice for the dress, but now I'm thinking I probably won't use it. Um, for the dress. I'm not sure. We'll see. So that was that. And then the other fabric I bought um, is this cotton cotton drill fabric. Um, and I'm actually really surprised at how stiff this is because I've bought cotton drill from Spotlight before, but it's never this um, never this stiff and, and thick as well. So yeah, that's. That's interesting. Um, originally I was going to make the corset for the dress out of this cotton drill fabric from Homecraft, but I was too impatient and um, ended, up, ended up making the, the corset out of um, calico material. Actually, hang on, I'll just go get the corset so you can see. Okay, so I've got at least what I've done so far of the corset, um, and this is just uh, basic calico material from Spotlight, as you can see. Yeah, nothing really interesting there. I still need to finish this corset, but <laughs> since I got my fabrics, I just want to start on the actual dress, um, and then I'll, I'll come back to the corset when I uh, feel like it. Because at the moment, as you can see, it's missing eyelet holes, um, and I don't like doing eyelets. <laughs> I want to do the fun stuff over here, so let's put that aside. Okay, so yeah, those were the three fabrics I bought from Homecraft Textiles. So it was the satin, the cotton drill, and the cotton voile on there. Um, these two fabrics here, um, I actually just went to Spotlight this morning to purchase um, a lot, <laughs> a lot of um, cotton broadcloth material. And the reason being is because this satin is super duper lightweight. Um, as you can see, it's very sheer as well. Um, and I want to actually underline this satin fabric uh, with cotton broadcloth fabric. So that's why I bought a lot of, uh, of this fabric. Um, the other reason is my friend, um, Spark Doss Cosplay. Um, she's also on YouTube, so check her out. Um, she told me about what's called a dust ruffle. And it's basically a ruffle that attaches to the bottom of the, the dress, so where the train is, and it collects all the dust as you, as you walk. Um, basically protects the nice fabric um, from touching the floor, um, keeps it lifted up off the ground, and then all, when, you, when, it, when it goes to cleaning, um, you can just like detach the dust ruffler and then wash that. I don't know, just look into it. Um, just type in dust ruffle, train Victorian dress or something like that that's what I did into Google and there's a ton of information about that so that's what I'm thinking of using all of this cotton material for and then I also have this um, 
uh, what's it called? Poplin fabric. So this is not cotton. This is like pretty much polyester. Um, but I'll be doing the the bodice mock up with this fabric um, before I cut into my satin fabric for the bodice. Okay, so that's um, all the all the materials from. Oh, I also got that from Spotlight. Um, they don't they don't have the uh, they didn't have the six millimeter one. Um, yeah, this was the smallest they had, so I got that. Um, so that's all the fabrics from Australian stores. And then I'll just go through the two other fabrics I've got. So I've got this netting, um, which was advertised as chul on AliExpress. But let's, uh, let's go close up so you can see. I, I... There we go. Let me know, is this tulle or netting? Because uh, my friend, Kirili Cosplay, also here on YouTube, check her out too, um, told me that this is netting, uh, not tulle. So, yeah, but I like it. It looks pretty. <laughs> um, so I bought 10 yards of that off AliExpress. Um, yeah, uh, and then this lace fabric, um, so there's not actually much of it. I'll just sort of pop it on the ground so you can see that I don't have that much. Um, but my friend Nicole from Let Down Your Golden Hair, also from YouTube. I'll link everyone's channels down below in the description box. Um, but basically Nicole got me this lace um, for Secret Santa last year um, as part of the YouTube group, um, Facebook group. There was a, there's a Facebook group for YouTubers who do costumes. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. Um, and we did Secret Santa. So yeah, there's not that much of this lace, but I really would like to include, um, some of this lace in the dress. So that would be really cool if I could. Um, oh, one more thing. So here I have all of my flowers. Um, so I have about 200 flowers. I counted them this morning. Um, I've got pink, purple, and then like a light, a light pink color. Um, yeah, I laid them out all on the ground this morning and it does not look like I have enough. So I might actually have to purchase a whole nother set of flowers. Um, and these all came from eBay. So I don't think there's anything else to mention um, as far as materials go. Um, I do have, obviously, uh, lacing for the corset, which is currently uh, in the Midnight Masquerade Aurora dress. I literally have one lace that I use for all of my corset costumes. Um, yeah, And then I also have some ribbon, which is what I'm going to hopefully use for um, the back of the bodice um, to lace that, lace that up. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for materials. Let's go through some of my um, thoughts uh, around this project as of right now. So, thoughts. Um, I have these two patterns. Um, this one I've already used once before for uh, the blue dress for Wonder Woman um, because it has like a really deep V back and that was perfect to, uh, you know, do the whole sword in the back of the dress thing um, for Wonder Woman. Um, and Aurora's dress also has quite a deep V back, which is why I was thinking of using this pattern. Um, but now I'm thinking with a corset and everything, maybe my back of my dress won't be that deep. So we'll see. But I am thinking of using at least the, the top portion of the sleeve of the dress in, in this pattern because Aurora's dress does have sleeves. So I might use this pattern for the sleeves. And then I've also got this pattern here, which I got for $4 at a garage sale, which was a good, good deal. Um, basically, I bought this pattern because I wanted to see how the, this uh, detachable train looks, how it looks when it's laid out flat, um, because I just couldn't conceptualize it in my head. Um, but now after doing a little bit more research into trains and things like that, um, 
I have a bit more of an idea of how I want to do the train for Aurora's dress. Um, I really do like this shape along the bottom, but I'm just not so keen about all of the fabric being gathered up here. Um, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see how we go. But this is a really pretty dress, so I'd actually like to make it, um, you know, just for, just regularly like that for a modern, um, as a modern dress. Um, yeah, it's a really pretty dress. So I have those two patterns. Um, now I'm just going to talk about some other stuff. Okay, to the sewing room. This is my new sewing setup, I love it so much. Thank you to the previous tenant for um, selling me her table. Um, this was also the, the sewing table of the previous tenant. Um, she was into quilting, which was, which was cool to see. So what I've done here is uh, used my leftover calico material to cut out this shape. <laughs> um, and this is like a miniature version of the dress or the skirt portion of the dress so I can visualize how a train would look. Now, as you can tell, it does not drape. This material does not drape whatsoever. But it's essentially a circle and then one end of the circle is a lot longer wider so and this is the waist where my fingers are <laughs> um, so you can see that that would form like a, a train on, on the dress obviously it would drape a lot nicer with satin but hopefully that that helps to visualize because I had such a hard time visualizing this without actually seeing it like this anyway so that's one visualization <laughs> um, and then I did the exact same thing but I, um, I wanted to try making the front part of the skirt slimmer and then putting more of the fabric in the back so it would sort of like fold over on itself um, a little bit when you, when you wear it. So I don't know, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Um, but I have looked at my fabric, the satin, and uh, it does not seem like I even have enough to do something. Uh, like this because for circle skirts you need a lot of fabric and I don't have that so chuck those away because they're probably not going to be followed. Um, so what I've done instead is uh, 